the syllabus uh, as it uh, appears on the website is, I um, will just uh, read out the syllabus. This syllabus of course, uh, we thoroughly discussed in the power group and with few faculty members and uh, then only we arrived at this syllabus. Um, there were good suggestions and um, uh, another two professors, they have agreed to probably take the course later on. So, uh, we start with background and introduction and um, so, we will introduce the concept of smart grid, uh, then the uh, migrating from the uh, conventional grids to smart grids, what are the essential differences, what is expected in the smart grids. So, that, that all thing will be in the background in introduction. Uh, next, we see the smart grid architecture. So, uh, so we we'll look into architecture. Then we come to the components of architecture. What are the components, various components? The main component of the architecture is the AMI, which is advanced metering infrastructure. So, we will uh, uh, see in details what this advanced metering infrastructure means. Uh, since uh, we need to, one of the essential features is the two way communication in the smart grid. So, the communication technologies they play important role for the success of smart grids. So, we will uh, therefore, um, uh, study all the communication technologies uh, which are used in smart grids and see their pros and cons and uh, kind of comparison. Uh, most of the smart grids, uh, they do not use a single communication technologies. Uh, most of the many technologies are used at different, uh, different uh, hierarchical levels. So, uh, one single communication technology may not be suited th through and through. So, that is why uh, at different stages, what options are available and uh, how do we choose a technology. Uh, so, we will discuss about that. Uh, next in the uh, syllabus is the topic on the business model and the cost benefit analysis of smart grids. So, these are the uh, kind of economical uh, studies. Uh, so, one of of course, one of our students had done in details uh, this and uh, uh, so uh, we will take up a case study also, a uh, practical system, uh, how the business model works. Of course, all said and done, definitely finally we have to see the feasibility of the uh, smart grid, whether it is really feasible or not and uh, justifiable, even if, um, even if it is experimental level, we need to do that. Uh, next uh, uh, in the line is uh, about the data analytics, forecasting techniques and demand response. And for all these, uh, we will go into the mathematical formulation and uh, of course, all possible solutions. So, what we mean by this is, uh, Maybe in the next lecture, when we start the lectures, that time I think this some of the terms may not be very clear, but uh, uh, those terms uh, will be explained in the uh, in the Friday lecture. Uh, so uh, demand response to facilitate the demand response, of course, again we do, do need the uh, two-way communication. Uh, now coming to forecasting techniques. Um, uh, the some of the decisions which are taken, uh, whether it is utility or whether it is consumer side, um, they are based on the what is going to happen tomorrow, or maybe a day ahead. So, and uh, depending on how correct is your forecast, you obviously your accuracy of your whatever decisions you are taking. 
depends on how good uh, your estimate is or how good your forecast is. So, uh, of course, not only here you, you find the uh, application of forecasting everywhere of course. So, uh, so these forecasting techniques uh, we have done some work of course in this area. Uh, these uh, whatever the consumer uh, we have a, a pattern of consumption for every consumer and uh, we do need data most probably uh, 15 minute interval or 30 minute interval or 1 hour interval and for years together maybe at least a year. So, if we have all this data somehow and then, then we can uh, probably we will be able to forecast uh, depending on the requirement whether it is cons each consumer wise or whether it is group wise or it depends on the required requirement. But forecasting techniques are going to play very important role in decision making whether it is demand response or whether uh, any other uh, other applications are there. So, um, and then data analytics we are going to include in the data analytics things like uh, uh, machine learning techniques also. So, forecasting of course, we will cover one or two lectures, we will see the conventional ways of forecasting and maybe more advanced uh, techniques like maybe we can apply deep learning for forecasting to improve on the error or accuracy. So, those also advanced techniques also we will be, uh, will be studying. And um, uh, in data analytics as I said that um, uh, whatever data is in your hand, uh, all these because of the new meters and uh, so many facilities, huge amount of data is available to you. Now, uh, the most important information about the system is all embedded in data. Uh, see for example, if you talk about um, uh, say OMS which is outage management system. Now, outage management system typically what it does is it tells you uh, that which equipments are overloaded, what you should do, when the when to take the outage. Uh, now, single set of data uh, depending on now of course, uh, what does the data include? The data generally will include things like voltage, current, uh, the consumption value, power, real power, reactive power. It may contain additional information like uh, how many switchings are done, uh, how many times uh, there was fault. So, this data set uh, definitely is going to play is all the information of the system is embedded into this data. Uh, and so, uh, uh, See, for example, what happened is one of my friend who works for Reliance, this, their load dispatch is very near. The load dispatch at the distribution levels are very different. There is a DMS as compared to EMS. EMS is energy management system at the transmission level. DMS is at the distribution level. Reliance is having one such DMS very near uh, here right uh, uh, on the JVLR road. Uh, so, I visited there once uh, uh, the friend who is kind of in charge there. He said, uh, we have so much of data, but uh, really we do not do much with the data. I am sure there is a lot of information which is very useful. So, can you suggest uh, how we do kind of data mining and uh, take out the data and use it really? So, that is uh, definitely utilities uh, do have such questions. So, uh, remember that most of the applications which we are trying to talk, will, will be talking about, uh, they, they will, uh, uh, the data set is single and uh, you, you can extract uh, whatever information you want from that data, provided of course, that uh, the kind of data is available. See, the, the transformer loading, and so the temperatures for say condition monitoring and uh, system monitoring. Uh, different data are needed for routine application different data. So, all this data is at one place and um, um, 
So you can appreciate that yes, there is uh, the complete information of the system is embedded into these data sets and uh, depending on what kind of studies you want to make, uh, you can extract relevant part of the data and use it for that application. That is how it goes. And then there are advanced uh, techniques, analytical techniques as well as uh, say for example, data mining, all these machine learning. So what do they do is? Uh, they will apply all these techniques uh, and of course, uh, for that matter all smart grids, uh, we have in India of course, pilot projects going on, the Ministry of Power is supporting uh, 14 pilot projects in India, uh, one per each state, many states are having a pilot project going on right now in every state and um, uh, when these pilot projects are taken up for particular state, you, you, you have to like define uh, uh, right in the beginning, uh, what do you do, what do you want to achieve by this smart grid deployment. So, uh, Every state has to a pilot project when it is taken or any project for that matter is taken. Uh, you have to define what is supposed to do. Now, what is supposed to do are called as the functionalities of the smart grid. So, there are different functionalities which you can do with the help of the smart grids. So, what we will do is we, we are going to uh, uh, devise the syllabus such that we clear cut define the functionalities and the functionalities may not be same in every project. Different projects have different requirements. So, you see one state, other state, whatever one state is trying to do, other state may not do. So, functionalities are to be defined. That is the first step uh, in, in building up the smart grid. Uh, the functionalities uh, once they are defined, uh, mostly the uh, functionalities themselves will direct you or dictate you that what kind of infrastructure is needed. There is something which is like common infrastructure which is for all the smart grid projects, but then there will be uh, what type of measurements are needed, uh, where to deploy. I mean, so the functionalities. Uh, directly, uh, I mean, they will imply what kind of infrastructure should be developed, all right. And uh, once the infrastructure is defined, uh, generally what happens when the execution or the implementation aspects are seen, uh, that uh, mostly with this pilot project, there will be a consultant uh, associated with every project who is kind of expert in that area. So, to execute the project, he will then prepare practically speaking, he will then prepare what is called as a DPR, which is detailed project report, which exactly according to the, it, it will see, it will first will uh, see the state of the art. That means, it will see the ground realities existing at that time. And on the top of that, you have to build a smart grid, right. So, it will first study all the uh, current status of the system. Then it will say, okay, you want to achieve this, then uh, the, these, this is the area in which you want to implement. Then uh, at this point, this is this is what the infrastructure, this is the communication technology choice, these are the smart meter choice. Then so, and then all the data, uh, uh, when it comes, then the, 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 that will come in the hierarchy, which will see that how the data travels or how it is transmitted. So, um, yeah, once the DPR is ready, then, then the whole process will start tendering and all. I have been associated with some of the pilot projects right from their inception. So, I have seen with uh, how the things actually happen in the actual system. I was associated with the Bangalore also in BESCOM, uh, there was a project. So, uh, two or three years I was associated with it. So, I have seen various stages of development. I was in the expert committee. So, anyway, that is a good experience. We will be of course, talking about that more when going, uh, we come to the pilot projects. Uh, uh, so, uh, the data analytics 
once the data is ready and data has reached and you have defined what do you what do you want to achieve uh, say for example uh, uh, we talk about say demand response uh, in the demand response now the simple question which of course you should answer is uh, should the demand response uh, demand response is is kind of response from the demand side there is a difference between demand side management and demand response demand side management is the management which is done by the utility the the consumer doesn't have a role to play because utility can put them on and off directly so the consumer has, has kind of no choice demand response is the response which is comes from the load side or the demand side and of course you do need to a communication how he has to know what is happening he has to know that if it takes certain step what is the advantage to him all these things are in in demand response so coming back uh, now data analytics we are talking and we are saying that a utility wants to know not that uh, each and every consumer is supposed to uh, participate in demand response now utility can give kind of incentives and utility has to identify that these are the set of customers uh, which are which are good candidate for demand response application now if you want to do that you have to do data analytics the data analytics what it can it can do for you is we kind of build a uh, uh, a consumer behavioral model then from that I will be able to identify oh look here these are the people who are good candidates then the offer goes to them that okay you do this 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 then this is kind of saving you will get you benefit we also benefit so uh, you see the role of this just one sample but like that uh, uh, anything which you want to execute anything you, which you want to do the data analytics is, is, is important tool to analyze the data data is huge so to analyze the data and whatever you want to achieve it's as I said in the beginning it's all embedded in the data itself most of the things whatever whatever be the analysis or functionality you want to achieve you you do need uh, huge data and with this data I put proper analysis you can conclude certain things and uh, act on them so this is the importance of the data analytics we will um, hopefully we will do some machine learning techniques also and then see uh, how it can be done simple clustering techniques will also be useful uh, uh, and there will be some additional things next we come to in the syllabus we come to uh, so uh, say demand response for example again coming back to that now uh, demand response this consumer behavioral model is initial planning stage but when you actually want to uh, execute the demand response that by how much amount the load should reduce and um, it's so that particular problem is called like like the scheduling so there are different loads in the system and uh, you have different so resources in the system the resources may um, consist of things like um, you you have a conventional grid plus you you may have uh, some kind of uh, renewable energy at the other end or you may have storage devices so uh, you have some resources at your hand and you have certain loads and you have certain loads with constraints it's not that um, you can arbitrarily choose that oh, oh you can, you will do like this uh, that's just not possible so the kind of constraints which can which have to be taken into account can uh, be things like uh, a consumer can say oh, okay this is the load uh, don't this is not controllable load so don't ask me to change this so when you formulate the problem you will have to account in your mathematical formulation you will have to formulate the problem with these all constraints right so these constraints are accounted for your optimization objective may be of course 
uh, you, you can term in terms of maybe consumer billing you want to minimize the billing, maximize the profit or it may be from the utility side he will have certain objective or you can combine the two things and float a objective function with proper constraints. So, this is the formulation which you will do for the demand response and uh, of course, you can you can solve that with taking into all resources, if battery is there, what time the battery should be on off, what time the your, uh, your generation should be on off. A consumer is called as a prosumer when he is generating something at his end. So, it will be called as a prosumer. So, he is consumer plus he uh, is generating some power also. So, all these uh, formulations, uh, uh, detailed formulations are needed and there are number of uh, number of papers in the literature available. So, um, yeah, so uh, there is the importance of the um, uh, data analytics and uh, so of course, we will have some assignments on this also. Uh, next comes the um, large scale renewable energy integration and distribution level smart. Okay, so, um, as I was saying that uh, mostly uh, the smart grids, they go into uh, uh, into the distribution system at the distribution system level. So, all these things uh, how the smart grid is going to affect for example, micro grids, how it is going to affect the uh, large scale renewable energy integration, all these things uh, of course, we will study in the light of smart grids also. Then the next is um, optimal sizing of the energy storage devices. Uh, in the light of smart grids of course, again then electric vehicles. So, all these uh, as I was saying there can be various resources and uh, whatever are the resources available uh, 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 in that particular area where you are trying to locate your smart grids, they need to be accounted. So, uh, the next topic is on the cyber security. Uh, so, of course, uh, cyber security, uh, uh, Minal is expert in cyber security, she is working for PAD in the topic also. So, and my peer, uh, student, MTech student Kostub has done. So, uh, very luckily for us, Kostub is coming for convocation before going for, he is going to join for PAD in US. So, he will be here that week. So, he will be delivering two lectures just before the convocation. So, we will see that time the details of the cyber security. Uh, of course, we are concerned the cyber security is a very huge topic, uh, but we are concerned here with the cyber security in context of the power power systems. So, because we are not going into the CS domain and we are not going into dwell into some other areas. So, but uh, as related to our own area, we will be concentrating on those things. Uh, right. Then uh, next is about the smart grid standards, smart grid regulations. So, smart grid standards, uh, the, the, there is a question about what is called as interoperability. Uh, what we mean by interoperability is uh, um, that uh, the meters or uh, whatever devices are there, uh, the, uh, the devices come from various uh, vendors and the, the devices, they have their own uh, settings and standards. Now, when you try to integrate the readings from the various devices, uh, uh, that is the question of the interoperability. You have to bring them into one single format, which is understandable by the uh, by the machine or computers. So, um, so that is why there is a need for the standards uh, at various levels. Many of the things have to be standardized and already there are some standards which are already existing. So, we will be of course, concentrating on the standards as related to smart grids. Okay. So, there are already some standards. So, we you should be aware when you do a course, you should know that yes, there are some standards like this IEC standards or Indian standards. So, we will get acquainted with those things. Then, um, then, the, the, then there is a smart grid regulations are also there, regulations uh, regulatory commission will also be floating at the distribution end and for the uh, smart grids, there will be some regulations because the regulations uh, have to be there because 
people cannot uh, behave as they want because there is no, there are certain ways in which you have to handle the things. So, regulations will uh, uh, give the guidelines as to how to operate, uh, how to plan, how, what are the, there will be some guidelines in the regulations. So, that is it. So, then next uh, topic uh, is about the smart cities. So, uh, here in IIT we have uh, uh, CUs which is about the urban area, uh, smart cities, how, uh, what we mean by smart cities is, uh, you must have heard in paper and all that, uh, there are 100 smart cities which the government is going to uh, support and such things. When we say uh, smart city, there are mainly in any given city, there are three main important things. Uh, for the welfare of the city, one is the energy or the power, the second is the transport and the third is the uh, water connections. So, these are the backbones of a good uh, urban city. So, uh, there have been attempts to integrate all these essentials of the smart grids. So, energy being one part, the, uh, the water uh, supply and the transport being the other parts and uh, there are some attempts to uh, kind of integrate these three. See for example, uh, I mean imagine that okay, uh, you get energy bill and water bill as a combined one single bill. Uh, it, there are advantages and disadvantages, I agree, but still people are uh, thinking on those lines. A smart city, uh, you might have seen say. Uh, some uh, when in Bombay the uh, uh, BST started, it has electricity and transport together. Okay, it's a combined thing. Or if you uh, go to some of the uh, U.S. Uh, uh, cities like Chicago, you will see that a single ticket is valid in the bus as well as local. So it has its advantage. So when you integrate certain things. So, the, the concept behind the smart uh, cities, uh, so we will see uh, it is part of smart grids only is taken. So, smart cities and uh, government of India is convinced about the advantages. So, that is why uh, they agreed to give money to certain cities uh, to convert them into smart cities. Okay, so, that is it. Uh, uh, the next is about uh, smart grids and power markets. So, there is a relation between smart grids and power markets in the sense that uh, the consumer, uh, if he is a prosumer, then he can sell directly through smart grids, it will facilitate and he can also buy from directly from uh, the, we know that there are already power markets existing in India also. Uh, those who are done, maybe I do not think uh, restructured power systems, maybe nobody has done. So, the, the uh, thinking that, that the electricity is like a commodity which is uh, which can be bought in the market. There is a concept behind the, the power markets. Uh, this is a full fledged course which of course I started that course 7 8 years back here. So, it runs on and off. So, restructured power systems uh, uh, facilitates you with the power markets where the power can be bought. Uh, so, in the communication sector, if you are not happy with your supplier, you change the supplier from maybe Vodafone, you go to Airtel or something. So, no, why not in electricity? If you are not happy with your supplier, you change your supplier. So, uh, such a thing uh, of course, uh, is, is indeed possible in some of the Western countries, you can choose your supplier. So, that is the concept. So, how what is the, what smart grid, how it is related with that? There is some research in going on in this area also. Then uh, uh, next is about the Indian scenario pilot projects. So, so this of course, we will have a lecture on pilot projects, uh, ongoing projects and um, then roadmap. Uh, when a roadmap is nothing but uh, a kind of DPR which gives you systematically step by step how the implementations can be done. And uh, lastly, I have listed also. Uh, how smart grid are related with the transmission system. So, that of course, let us see if time permits we will do that also. These all uh, what happens is uh, uh, 
uh, in, when you say smart grid because the buzzword it is a very attractive word. So, everybody tries to push everything under smart grid <laughs> which of course, I personally I do not like because uh, you put anything and everything and say that it is smart grid. So, so uh, I, I as far as possible what I would like to uh, see in this course is uh, I would like to see that the things are actually related with the smart grids. The things which are not related with the smart grids, people say hardcore uh, say power quality problem and they go into power quality and maybe smart grid is nowhere uh, needed in that. So, uh, such things uh, I would like to avoid. I would like to restrict the syllabus uh, which is definitely related with smart grid. And uh, so, that is why we can talk of the smart generators, we can talk of smart uh, uh, transmission, we can uh, in smart uh, grid transmission, uh, all these uh, wide area measurement and all people put that in smart grid only, but uh, of course, uh, I do not agree with such things. I mean without uh, referring to any smart grid independently they can be they can be studied. So, that is the that is why what how I look at it. Um, now, I will just uh, uh, instead of these um, the cramped syllabus which is which appears there uh, what I try to do is uh, we have put part 1, part 2, part 3, part 4 and uh, the, the modules are defined which of course, will be visible to you in the course website. So, a module uh, uh, the part 1 consists of essentials of smart grid where introduction and a AMI and the communication technologies is kind of backbone of uh, smart grid they are covered. The part 2 is talking about the functionalities of the smart grid. There, there are various modules which are again defined in part 2. Uh, so, he, here are the after part 1, here are the part 2 which is talking about um, functionalities. So, in functionalities module 4 is talking about the distribution automation, then uh, uh, condition monitoring and asset management. Now, this is something which is not listed in the course syllabus on the website, the which you see. But anyway, there are uh, some additional topics uh, which appear. Say, for example, module eight on self healing. Now, self healing it doesn't appear in the original. <laughs> this is uh, we will see because this self healing. One of my uh, master student did uh, is a MTech project on self healing using smart grids. One of the important features of the smart grid is self healing. But uh, this self healing actually uh, requires. Um, requires uh, interface with the CS because it uses multi agent and you need to know Java for that. So, maybe Minal is here, she knows all those things. So, that is why uh, we were hesitant of putting these uh, self healing techniques because they require CS background. So, uh, that is why it was not listed for some reason, it was not listed there, but we will uh, we'll definitely we have published a paper on self healing using smart meter my M tech student. So, we will touch upon those things. So, at least you will even you, you do not have Java background you will come to know what kind of applications or what does it really contain self healing. We have in our uh, paper we have reviewed uh, in the literature up till now under self healing what all things applications have done to power uh, uh, grid. So, we have listed and 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 uh, categorize them into certain things. So, we will touch upon those things also. Uh, so, uh, here now see this uh, part to the functionalities, uh, self healing is a fun functionality again means that sense. So, yeah. So, this is a more detailed um, module wise uh, syllabus for us which uh, you do not have to take down because we will put all this on the website course website. I think uh, Moodle we can put all these things in Moodle. Uh, so, um, so this uh, almost similar thing what we just saw in the syllabus, but uh, divided into some modules and then uh, part 3 talks about security standards and regulations. In the chapter number which you just see there say 78, 80, 
they pertained to this uh, handbook which is three volume ha handbook so so those those things are actually discussed in those chapters of that handbook then uh, implementation aspects uh, in the end uh, uh, which talks about the feasibility studies and then pilot projects and uh, key performance indices road map so all these uh, uh, come under uh, part 4 so um, so you can go to library uh, there, there is uh, one more uh, uh, i think the isgf book is not listed here handbook so there is one more handbook which uh, isgf india smart grid uh, forum has published a soft copy of this will be put on to the uh, course website today only so it will be visible to you soft copy unfortunately we don't have soft copy of this three part uh, reference books in the library it's quite detailed there are more than 80 chapters uh, it's huge uh, so you see what uh, you find interesting uh, as a the first step uh, getting introduced in the research aspect of smart grid what i would uh, uh, like to tell you is that um, uh, ieee uh, publishes uh, ieee transactions on smart grids uh, so uh, you have all of you have access to IEEE Explorer. So what uh, uh, you can see that IEEE uh, transactions on smart grid. Uh, you see maybe a smart grid transaction for last uh, five seven years, and then you will come to know what kind of research is going on in the smart grid area. Uh, so I would request you to. Uh, just have a look at the all the papers, the topics, uh, various topics uh, which are handled under smart grid and uh, then choose one paper uh, uh, to go into little more details whatever interests you and um, uh, just write down maybe in three pages your own what is the gist of the paper, what is objective, what is the methodology used, what are the results, what is the conclusion. So this will orient you. So as as a, it's not an assignment, but it's just um, by next Wednesday I would expect everybody to come up with a small write up uh, of any paper which he likes. There is another smart grid uh, journal which has started just uh, uh, two months back. Uh, it is IET uh, smart grid journal. Uh, it is just a uh, volume one May 2018 is volume one. Uh, issue 1. So, uh, that is a new journal which IET uh, UK has started. So, that is also available in library. You just type in Google or uh, uh, IET smart grid. So, you will see that they have started a new journal IET uh, UK people have started a new journal. Of course, there is huge amount of literature available. Uh, that is why uh, uh, this course will actually at least orient you to see that what are the most essential parts of smart grid overall picture you will get and some things will go in detail. Uh, uh, I plan to uh, the evaluation scheme is, is not going to be easy because this is a new course. So uh, there will be a lot of emphasis on the course project obviously. So um, we will have uh, say around 40 percent weightage to the course project. Uh, we, we will have assignments, three assignments, 10 mark each. Then we will have instead of mid sem, just before a, a mid sem, we will have a quiz of 10 marks and the end sem will be of 20 marks. So that makes it 100. This is tentatively what I have thought about that the evaluation scheme, there will be lots of emphasis on how much originality and so there will be a report plus presentation. We will reserve last uh, last four lectures for your presentation of uh, the course. So uh, in in one lecture we can cover two people. So two into four eight. So last eight uh, last four lectures uh, you will have presentation of your course project. You will have to have a small report of five to six page plus a presentation and there is a lot of footage. I, I would like you to take the course project very seriously.
uh, you have a chance to go into new technology, learn new things and uh, it, it's, it will be useful later on also to you because in the industry if you uh, know something on smart grids this uh, uh, asset for you, it is a plus point for you. So, if you put in effort it will a very rewarding thing for you. So, I would highly encourage you to uh, go into details of. Uh, so, uh, as I said you will get a very good idea once you scan through all the topics of the IEEE uh, transactions on smart grids. And uh, of course, we, we will be putting the, the papers of our students, we have around 12 papers published up till now on smart grids by in last 6, say, 7 years. So, we, these papers will be available on the course website again. So, you can see what efforts have gone from our team at IIT Bombay on, on smart grid topic. So, uh, including demand response and all, we have journal papers. Cyber security, we have papers. So, cost benefit analysis, we have papers. Then, machine learning applications, we have already published papers. And uh, fortunately, some of the students uh, for convocation are coming. So, they, they, they will also participate and they will also can learn first hand, they will, they will also give lectures here. So, um, it is an interactive in that sense the course. So, anytime you are of course free to contact me or the TAs, you can interact with us. So, there is a kind of outline hopefully that gives you some flavor as to what is the content of this course. As far as the motivation is quite clear that we would like to get uh, acquainted with these new technologies. Uh, and of course, government of India, etc. They are also definitely putting in lot of money. Uh, and you can, uh, there is a bulletin which comes out, uh, which talks about, uh, which talks about the progress of the smart grid pilot projects. So every uh, two months they update that what's happening in this project. So there is a, a project at uh, in Tamil Nadu on at Pondicherry. Uh, which is kind of in working stage. So, it is already just uh, uh, two days back on Monday, I, I was at uh, NIT Trichy where there was a student who has done PhD on Pondicherry project. So, I have the full details about the Pondicherry pilot project. And uh, he has done cost benefit analysis and he has given the complete details of the project. Uh, this person was, is from the power grid who did PAD on smart grids at, uh, and he was the man who executed uh, the uh, Pondicherry project. He is from power grid, they were the consultant to the Pondicherry project. So, we have very first hand information about the project, how many meters, what is happening, what functionality was there and uh, what they did and so that, uh, that PAD thesis is with me. Uh, I just examined just two days back, I was in NIT 3 g uh, for his PAD viva. So, that uh, PAD thesis also is with me. And uh, so, we do have a uh, sizable amount of uh, literature. Uh, as such, the literature is very huge, but in some pockets, uh, we, we have contributions. So, definitely, uh, I am sure you, you. So, we will have an individual project for the course project. We can have individual individual project. So, there will be 8 projects. So, ideally I would like uh, that uh, the topic be, be freezed by, by uh, 1st of August. So, you have another uh, how many 10 more than 10 days to freeze on your topic. So, earlier we freeze better it is so that you get more time to work on your particular topic. So, put in effort uh, uh, in these next 10, 12 days to try to converge on certain things. You can take help of us, of course. Uh, Minal is there, Raj is there, me, I am there. You can come and discuss, you can come up with say two, three options, you say, then we can tell you whether it is worth going in, into depth into a particular topic. So, yeah. So, there are few books also in library available on Smart Grid. Mostly three, four books, I have only issued three of them. 
So, they are on the architecture and communication technologies and such things. So, um, few books are available. Uh, we have ordered uh, not two books again. And there is another one soft book which has of course uh, just come. Uh, so, uh, so, right away uh, you go to library see these uh, in the reference section this cannot be issued. So, the, in the reference section you will find this uh, three volumes big volumes of uh, smart grid handbook and uh, uh, the Indian version uh, which is maybe a little uh, smaller version of the handbook is published by IHGF and uh, that soft copy is available with us and we will be putting that on Moodle today. Papers, some of the papers and soft copy of the book uh, syllabus detailed module this we are going to hopefully today or by tomorrow we will be keeping on the website. Now, I would uh, welcome any questions. Uh, yeah. Uh, sir, actually, like uh, we talked about the demand response. Demand response, like applying artificial intelligence and machine learning. So, my doubt is that uh, when you choose some customers for demand response, like if you apply some machine learning techniques, like uh, depending on the data which you have taken yesterday for tomorrow, then like there is an uncertainty, like right, sir, always like. Um, so, my doubt is how far is it tested? Like once you apply machine learning algorithms and you prepare a model and then you apply it on the uh, customers and you choose some customers. So, like how long is that model like, like valid? So, it will be changing like right, when you train with the new data. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh... If you see the uh, consumer, uh, uh, there is a pattern for the consumption. So, uh, the consumers which are covered by the smart grid are of various types. See for example, you have street lights, you have domestic consumer, you have commercial consumer, you have industrial consumers. So, what happens is? Uh, if the data is made available to you, uh, the kind of data which we use for the consumer behavioral model is taken from UK at London. There are around more than 5000 consumer data which is available at the 30 minute interval and this is over 2 years or so, so huge data. Now, what happens is uh, when you plot this data for say one consumer you plot, if you plot you will see a pattern of consumption and uh, uh, there is there are seasonal variation. Summer pattern will be different, winter pattern will be different. And if you see second year, uh, second year, there may will be minor changes only. See if you year after year, if you see the consumer pattern, the, the, the consumption pattern of consumers, okay. Now, there are uncertainties uh, when you talk about if he is a prosumer and if his renewable energy of course is all uncertain. There are uncertainties involved, there, there is no doubt about it. And our attempt through forecasting is, is for that only. The forecasting uh, is again of two types. We can have a deterministic forecasting, we can have a stochastic forecasting. So, uh, when the question about the uncertainties come up, uh, there are in the literature, there are some standard ways of dealing with the uncertainties. You may go for the stochastic approach or you may go for what fuzzy approach or you may go for uh, probabilistic statistical approach. So, depending on what kind of uncertainties are there and uh, there will be some remedies just try to minimize uh, your uh, a, a kind of error or it is to be contained into certain band. So, th there are uh, some remedies to take into account uh, the uncertainties. So, it can be done uh, at whatever base possible because anyway all said and done if it is battery and if it you are having PV and there is a cloud effect and all you have to take a decision finally. Whatever base possible way is there you will do that. Does that answer your question? Oh, yeah, 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 very much, very much, yeah. No, we are just starting, we have taken some sample system, 
in some of the European country it, it is all there actually if you see uh, yeah so uh, uh, these are actually executed uh, so whenever there are two a communication so uh, apart from the joke uh, uh, so you can you can have kind of automated system uh, if, if you want to say uh, your washing machine you leave it to the machine it will choose a time in the in the night when the prices are low it will buy automatically on and these things are actually there this is not a now it, it is not a joke it's actually happening in some of the north uh, european countries that uh, it is automated to such such an extent that yes it, it will choose a, it, it will have study made a thorough data analytics and thorough analysis is done and uh, uh, what ca can happen is uh, see what happens is uh, individual customer there, there is some kind of a consumer education first to be there to be educated there to be told what are the advantages etc uh, there will be all sorts of consumers the consumers are to be taken in confidence there have been experiments in some parts of the uh, uh, con uh, other countries where the consumers were not taken in confidence then it be becomes a fiasco so when the consumer are taken, the, uh, the consumer may not be interested in individual decisions. Some consumers say, oh, no, I'm not bothered with bill goes I don't I don't worry about it. So I, I was in one of the European countries. I asked some of the people. They say my bill is around 40 euros, and uh, if, if I uh, if I adopt whatever all complexity you are talking, I may be saving another three three euros. It's just one worth of one coffee, so I am not bothered. I don't want any such thing. That can just happen. Uh, so, um, so the, to overcome this, then there are ways and means. So, uh, yesterday only we were discussing. There are people called aggregator. So, this aggregator, what it does is, uh, there is uh, one particular group of consumer. It takes a, a decision on on behalf of a group of consumer. They together they say this is our housing corporate. You, you, you are we don't trouble us. You take any decision you want. Aggregator is entitled to take a decision. So on the behalf of on be, on behalf of that particular group, aggregator. So these are all when you come to co practical systems, you have to face some problems. It's not just uh, straight away everything. But then there are always ways and means when you want to implement. You have to be very serious. And uh, fortunately, the government, most of, uh, of the governments, they encourage such uh, attempts because uh, it is a kind of win-win situation. The because if you look from the utility viewpoint or from the consumer viewpoint, the utility gains because the peak has gone down, so is more comfortable. If the ramp rates uh, improve, it's more comfortable. From the consumer side, if, uh, he gets um, at least uh, there is something called as consumer satisfaction. So, uh, which of course is in some sense qualitative, it is not quantitative. You cannot measure in terms of money this kind of consumer satisfaction. So, they are happy with the supply, they say, yeah, it is better. Bill uh, reduction in bill is one thing which is quantitative, we can very clearly see, but then there are qualitative benefits also. So, all said and done. Yeah, there are some projects, there are all sorts of questions which come up when you come to a practical system. Some of the European consumers, they opposed saying that it is encroachment on our privacy. So, so what can you say? You say, they said, no, no, we do not want uh, that our data should be revealed to the utility. If suppose my pattern is something, suppose somebody gets uh, access to my pattern, then he knows when I am not at home. So that is uh, <laughs> <laughs> that is not good for me. So, uh, the, our privacy is gone. So, I do not want. So, so, all sorts of questions are there. So, when the implementation occurs and then the, all sorts of people are there. And then there will be some people who very much welcome. They say, yes, 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 I want to do it. And uh, say some of the countries like US, they are very clever. What they do is they, there is something called as energy challenge, DOE, which is Department of Energy Government of USA. They pose a challenge. What they do is to all the students in the universities, they say, okay, this is the smart grid data available to you. Do whatever you want and come up with anything you want to do with it. So, people come up with an app on the mobile saying that this is the data, this is what you can do. Thing number one, two, three, four, 
this uh, app on the on the consumer sees uh, this is a message okay you take this decision if you take you have option 1 2 3 if you do like this okay you get this much benefit and then he chooses and then the things automatically are taken these are all advanced things but uh, uh, my student has participated in one of the doe challenges all over the world anybody can take this challenge and uh, he can design an app so we were in top 10 at least so which was very good he developed four apps one of my students, his name is uh, Murthy, VSK Murthy. He developed an app and we submitted that app to in USA. So, we are rated quite good and the first and second they get prize and they go commercial. The government will, that is the trick always <laughs> these people do that they will float to all to see the talent, what talent goes and then they will pick up the best and uh, give prize and so this uh, type of things happen. And so, practically looking at the things is of course, definitely a little different thing. Uh, any other questions? Yeah. Sir, in the game context, like so many TV are integrated. So, and also like a vehicle charging infrastructure. So, how can this smartphone yeah, we, we have in syllabus that topic, <laughs> we are going to deal with those things. Uh, the electric vehicles and the batteries and the storage device, uh, how to optimally use them. We are going to see like what should be the optimal sizing, what should be the optimal location, then what should be optimal scheduling. So, all these aspects we, so we need uh, complete uh, background history data and uh, one of my PhD student right now is working on this, his name is Subir Mujumdar, he sits in the lab, lab there. So, he, he is working on this, so analyzing all the data to find what size of battery is needed, where to locate and once it is located and it is there, there are constraints again because the number of cycles, uh, on off cycles are there are restrictions on that. So, we take into account all those things in the formulation. So, renewable energy and batteries and how to choose, how to operate planning aspects and operational aspects, uh, both aspects are to be dealt. So, there is some work going on and people are quite active in all these things. <laughs> Practically speaking, uh, yeah, things are difficult. They are not as easy as we think because in the uh, meters, uh, whoever are the vendors, there is a uh, always a competition among all the vendors to offer you meter at whatever lowest price and then there are uh, meters coming from other countries also, so you have to compete with them. So. Um, and smart meters for that matter, uh, they are also of again various types, it is not a single type. So, though some of the functionalities will be common and some functionalities can be different also. So, um, yeah, there are practical difficulties in uh, properly choosing a smart meter, costing and then the delays and all these things are there. They come under the practical implementation <laughs> aspects. We will talk about them when we talk about the pilot projects, uh, that time the DPR, uh, detailed project report, it, it gives exactly uh, requirements. So, when the, uh, depending on the whatever is given in the DPR, the utility which is trying to build a smart grid, they will float a tender giving the specs that we need uh, this uh, smart meter with following specs. And these specs, then the, the vendors will respond to that. The, that procedure is there. I have seen all this in BASCOM when the meters, the, the tendering and everything is done. So, there is a big process and uh, this is all very tedious. It is a government <laughs> process. So, it takes a long time. But it is all done in a Pondicherry project where the meters are already deployed. So, there are people with practical experience. So, we can see. There are problems, I, <laughs> there will be problems when you talk practically. Yeah. Any other? Okay, then in that case, uh, we will stop here.